answer is in the painting. I'm sure of it. Freya, did you leave us a clue? So what's bothering you? Something that's not here. The thing we didn't find. We know she was holding it during the painting. Flora's ink dip feather? It was here. In this room. Where'd it go? We found it somewhere else. <laughs> we were a little too late to save it. So it was stolen from the crime scene, and ended up in the incinerator down in the study. Someone wanted to destroy it, I guess. But how? How was it stolen from up here in Flora's tower? Presumably, Flora dropped it when she fell unconscious. Yeah, and then what? The murderer couldn't have stolen it if they were up in the attic. So the question is, how could they steal something from a room they weren't able to access? The final clue about the crime scene. Freya left it for us right here. It's in the gramophone. You think so? Maybe not. Freya left it for us right here. It's in the unfinished painting. It's not quite a photo, but still. It's an image of the crime scene recorded just before the murder. Ah, if only she'd finished it, and then I could be totally sure. It's true she never finished it, but she did intend to finish it. Meaning? We know more about the painting than what Freya actually got down on the canvas. That's not it. 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 That's not it.
Freya prepared all the colors she was going to need before she started painting. going to be used to paint the sketch of something sitting in the window. Something in the window. Oh. There she is. Our little thief. How long has it been there? Did it hear the whole conversation? She did. But she's a very good listener. Well now, I think this has quite served its purpose, don't you? Penny, why did you- It's Penelope, if you don't mind. But, before we begin, isn't there a certain formality demanding our attention? I'm afraid I have to insist. It's to the benefit of us all, I assure you. Lovely. Now, tell me, what was it that drove you this far? I'm ever so curious. I wanted to help Freya's friends. Is that right? Interesting. Why did you do it, Penny? What did Freya do to you? Absolutely nothing. So, what? You just hated her indiscriminately? Freya Fellow was an inspiration to us all. She was possessed of a great energy. The volition to create something from nothing. The willpower to walk beyond her boundaries. She was truly free. Everything I couldn't be. You know what? I just realized I actually have no idea who Penelope Pointer really is. Weird, isn't it? Considering we've met her, what is it, three times now? Exactly. How do we know this one isn't a disguise, too? You think you've already hollowed us out, don't you? Only a few short hours at Tangled Tower, and you feel like you've got everyone sussed. Unearthed every single one of our secrets. Nothing but bullet points for your notebook. Go on, indulge me. What does it say in your notes about Penelope Pointer? <laughs> I suppose I can't argue with that, can I? Penny, we only know what you choose to tell us. So why not help us out? Very well. Penelope Pointer is actually not very important at all. She pales in comparison to those who came before her and to those that came after. Living at Tangle Tower, it is very difficult to attain the levels of self-realization you probably take for granted. Um, you sure this is a Tangle Tower thing and not a you thing? Perhaps you didn't notice. Not one of them is happy. Not one. So why stay? Why not just leave? I thought she did leave. Penny, you said you traveled, didn't you? I did. Many times I've walked away. It did not help me. You saw the family tree hanging in the Grand Hall, did you not? Yeah, it lists a bunch of people who don't live here anymore. A bunch of people who don't live here anymore. I couldn't have put it better myself. My mother, for one. My father, too. 
the other two Remingtons, Poppy's mother, Primrose, and her brother Richard. And Fitz's father. That's five. Five people that might have lived here, but don't. And that was the first question I wanted answered. You wanted to know where they'd all gone? More than that. I wanted to know if I belonged with them. I have no place here. Not among the fellows, the Remingtons, or the Pointers. But I felt there must be a reason why everyone else left. Some common purpose they all shared. Perhaps it could be my purpose too. So, what did you actually do about it? Nothing I could do, at first. Nobody would tell me anything. The more questions I asked, the fewer answers I got. Then, I found it. I was 19. Same age Freya is now. Found what? The study. The one hidden in the middle of the house. It's right next to a bedroom. I'd hear voices at night. Deep ones. And the strangest thing, the wall behind my bed would get incredibly hot. For hours on end, the paint would peel. Wallpaper wouldn't stay up. I thought I was cursed. I thought it was something trying to break through. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I found my way in the same way you did. Once you know it's there, it's simple. So, you got into the study and found the incinerator. That must have been a relief, right? It was still warm when I found it. Then, I looked inside. Let's see how thorough you've been. Tell me, do you know what a misted is? Misted? What? As I expected. After all, their connection to the Freya case is minimal, at least at the surface. Sorry, what are we talking about? It's a collective term, from before my time. Birds, insects, amphibians, anything living off the lake water. The mutation can take several generations, or it can happen overnight. Wait, mistids. Like cryptids. Uh, like Bigfoot or whatever. A little egregious, isn't it? I suspect that was an intentional parallel. The main difference being mistids are perfectly real. They're just kept secret. Or at least, that was the original plan. As it happened, some got out. Quite a few got out. How do you know all this? When I entered the study at 19, I found a single object that rather changed my life. Something which answered my questions while at once creating all new ones. That's not it. The five missing family members standing together as a single unit, calling themselves the Ambassadors of Misted Mansion. So, the house was renamed from Misted Mansion to Tangle Tower? And rightly so. The age of Misted Mansion is long past. When I looked inside the incinerator on my first visit to the study, I found nothing but ash. The afterimage of a bygone era denied to me in its entirety. The study, the room at the bottom of the lake, the lake itself, all empty shells. I felt my only hope lay with the ambassadors. If I could find them, maybe, maybe they'd share the family history that Flora and the others were trying so hard to forget. How did you track them down? It was tough. They'd taken almost everything. Books, maps, charts, the creatures themselves, all lost taken away or destroyed. But I got lucky. I got a lead. I found one, and he led me to the rest. And? What happened? Why'd you paint out all their faces? They didn't help you either, did they? Nineteen-year-old me had imagined they'd all left with a mission. A unified purpose. But they hadn't. They were, in fact, every bit as fractured as the people that still live here. Most of them had left tracking escaped mystics. Some claimed to be researchers, others 
little more than hunters. All five, completely useless to me. Even your own parents? Eventually, I returned to Tangle Tower. I had nowhere else to go. I considered giving up. But instead, I made a decision. There was only one person at Tangle Tower still of interest to me. My dear Uncle Pointer had suddenly made a show of taking up astronomy. A fairly superficial charade, I don't think many people were fooled by it. But I knew it wasn't just a falsehood, it was a mask. Pointer had found something, something from the era of Mr. Mansion. So, where did he get the beetle? I cannot be sure. But I theorized that he received it in the post. In the post? From who? Who can say? Someone outside Tangle Tower. But the thought that he would be in contact with such a person. All that time, I decided to take what was owed to me. So you stole it. Stealing the beetle turned out to be only the first step. Upon realizing it was gone, Pointer made little effort to disguise his frustration. I asked what was bothering him. He foresaw no risk in sharing a little of the truth with his niece. He told me he'd lost a rare treasure, something he'd been keeping safe. I suggested, innocently, that perhaps it was not lost. Perhaps it had been stolen. He was very ready to believe he'd been the victim of theft. When I offered to call in a private detective, he jumped on the idea. She arrived the next day. Hawkshaw prides herself on her punctuality, as you know. Why, though? Why go through all that? The name, the costume, and everything? It's somewhat sad to admit, but I had little use left for Penny Pointer as she was. Hawkshaw afforded me new advantages, opportunities. But didn't you have to pretend to be working for Professor Pointer? Ah, well, that was one of the advantages. Pointer was in such a desperate state, he was finally willing to share some of his secrets. On the second day, Hawkshaw explained she needed to be able to search the secret laboratory. Pointer gave in, and gave me the code for the harp statue. Reluctantly, but still. So... you stole Pointer's research? I would have done, if I'd found anything worth stealing. But he had made remarkably little progress barely scratching the surface of the beetle's true mystery. Which is? Ha! <laughs> she carries an exoskeleton approximately 90% identical to gold. But it's not the 90% I'm interested in. Did you ever question what exactly makes the water here so unique? Before Misted Mansion was built over the lake. Before the lake was even a lake. Lord Remington and his wife built a small structure here. A research station, supposedly. Fast forward two or three generations, and as you saw for yourself, it's been mostly cleared out. The ambassadors took everything when they left. And everything they didn't take was burned in the incinerator. However, possessing additional insight, I found something the others had missed. It's not much, but I have what I need. So, why isn't this the end of the story? Why did you stay? Why did you kill Freya? Simply put, Freya was too good for me. It's my fault. I pushed her over the edge, unknowingly, but still, I take the blame. What are you talking about? Did you know I based the design for Hawkshaw on something Freya painted? That's right. I had assumed it was purely abstract. I just thought it had a good energy. I later discovered it was a figure of some kind, something from Freya's recurring nightmare. For all her vitality, 
I think Freya was probably the most troubled of all of us. She was desperate to leave Tangle Tower, but she couldn't just walk away. For quite some time, she'd been trying to break into Pointer's laboratory. Freya and her friends were halfway through deciphering those symbols on the harp statue, I believe. Why did she care about getting into Pointer's lab? That's exactly what I wondered. At first, I thought perhaps she just wanted to free the beetles. She has a fondness for them. What Pointer was doing upset her significantly. But in fact, I think it was something else. I think she wanted to free Fiona. The real reason Freya was unable to leave Tangle Tower is that she could not get Fiona to agree to come with her. We're now firmly in the realm of speculation, but I think Freya felt that exposing the darker secrets of Tangle Tower, not just to the rest of the family, but to the world, would compromise all three families, and perhaps, somehow, free Fiona from the shackles of her inheritance. That was her plan anyway, but something happened before Freya could find her way into Pointer's laboratory. She found her way into your study, found your notes, found that photograph. I'm willing to bet she put it all together quicker than we did. So she worked out what had happened to the five ambassadors, specifically what you'd done to them when they refused to help you. Freya had made a promise to paint Flora as a birthday gift, a parting gift no less. She'd be in a locked room, several hours away from her friends. It was my best chance. But why hide in the attic? And why bother with the beetle at all? The beetle in the gramophone wasn't for Freya. It was for Flora. She didn't deserve to be involved. She suffered enough. I couldn't get Flora out of her room, but if she could be unconscious, then she wouldn't have to witness anything. Why the knife? The illusion of the painted knife with the blood? That was for Fiona. And Poppy too, I suppose. Gave them something to focus on. You mean it distracted them while you made your escape? It helped them cope. The very idea of something abstract, something supernatural. I believe it made things marginally less painful for them, initially. Worked on you, too. So why are you still here? Why not take your first chance and leave? Ah, well, I've been waiting for an opportunity to get my beetle back. I'd really rather not leave without it. Wait, it's still here? It's still inside the gramophone. What's going on? Poppy, they are both awake. I can see. You two all right? My head hurts. What happened to us? You were both unconscious. Fourteen minutes by my count. Really? You're both fine. No injuries. Was it the beetle? In the gramophone? I heard it through the ceiling in my room. The exact same sound we heard before the murder. I guess it must have been. So how did we get down here? What happened to Penny? Fit saved both of you, obviously. When I reached Flora's tower, you were both unconscious, and Penny was crouched down beside you. She had her crossbow on her, but who knows? She may have just been checking you were both asleep. Did you know she, uh, that she was the murderer? Poppy and Fifi suspected her. Apparently, they were pretty close to solving it themselves. Fitz did not want to believe us, because he liked Penny. A lot. But what happened? Fitz, what did she do when she saw you? She jumped out the window. What? Did she survive? She did. I heard something land in the garden outside my room. 
But by the time I got out there to check, she was already gone. Hang on. Poppy, why do you have Penny's hat bird? She left him behind. I found him sitting on the floor in the aviary, all by himself. Poor little thing. The mean lady didn't care about you at all, did she? No, she didn't. I apologize. Poppy seems to be under the illusion that the bird can understand human language. So, Penny got away. I'm afraid she did. We had suspected she might try to escape. I was stationed here by the lake's edge. I proved to be an ineffective guard. She took the boat. Did she take the beetle with her? Nope. How do you know? Because it's right here. It was still in the gramophone. I guess I scared her off before she had a chance to take it. Poppy, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to give it back to your father? No, I'm not. It doesn't belong to anyone. So, I'm going to put it on the ground and never bother it again. I think that's what she would have wanted.